Hello everyone, this is Marissa with Astuary Art, and today I'm going to break down my top 8 alcohol inks. It's a little overwhelming which brand to pick for you, so we're going to go through each one one at a time. At number 8, we're going to start off with Spectrum Noir. This is a new brand for me, I hadn't tried these before, and right away I noticed that they have a really nice pamphlet attached to each of their inks. It has all the product information, some safety info, and I really appreciated that. And it comes right off so you don't have to worry about having that around as you create your pieces. So that's a uh, plus right away. So let's go ahead and see how these, how these work here. So we're going to take the lid off. And another thing that I noticed is this is the only alcohol ink where you actually have to take the dropper out of the bottle, which is a bit of a negative in my opinion. That is because not only do you have an open bottle of ink sitting around while you're working, but also it's going to be a little bit more smelly because you have that open container. So I noticed that smell, and I actually, you'll see here in a little bit, I took the nozzle out and right away spilled a drop of ink where I didn't want it because that dropper is so big. So that's part of the reason that we're going to start this brand off at number eight. So I went ahead and put a drop onto my Yupo paper and used my 91%, yep, there's the drop, my 91% isopropyl alcohol there. And I'm moving it around a little bit. And when I test out my inks, I like to also put a little bit of just the ink at the bottom of my fade just to see how that works as well. So that first color that I just did a fade with is their Blue Turquoise 7. So I also wanted to test another color just to make sure we get a good comparison here. And I chose uh, BGR5, which is their blue gray number five. And this is going to lead into one of the pros for this brand. It has some really beautiful colors. And I mean some deep, rich, just lovely colors for your pieces that aren't in a lot of other brands. Often with alcohol inks, you see a lot of really vibrant colors because that's a big positive with alcohol inks. But I really appreciate a company that also likes to create some really intense, deep colors. So with this brand, I noticed right away that you start to kind of get a bit of a spider effect that you kind of saw as I held that piece of paper up to the camera. And that means that the ink is having a bit of a difficult time blending with the alcohol. And this is a little bit of a negative for me. I usually appreciate a brand where the ink will naturally very easily incorporate into the alcohol because this creates a much more natural fade. But this is something that you can overcome. You can see that I'm moving that alcohol into the ink a little bit more to try and force that uh, immersion into the alcohol. And you can kind of overcome that. And you can see here that it's starting to create a bit more of a natural fade. As these two fades began to dry, I noticed a couple of things. And one of them is that it started to develop more of that spidery texture, which meant that the alcohol was actually drying a little bit more quickly than the water in the pigment, which creates this texture here, along with a little bit of a grainy look, which is also from that pigment clumping together because it's not able to stay immersed with the alcohol as it dries. So a really good example here is you can actually see where I added more of that turquoise color without forcing the alcohol in and it created a line. So for me, this is a bit of a negative, but that's specific to the kind of art that I like to create. It can be a positive if you like a lot of texture in your work. And just to be fair, I did a couple of color swatches without using any heat to make sure that wasn't affecting any of the result. And I still got a lot of that grainy look there, which can be really neat if you want to add a little bit of texture. Uh, but for me personally, that's definitely something that I'm going to need to keep in mind if I ever choose to use this brand again. At number seven, we have Brie Rees Inks. This is a relatively new brand to hit the market, and it definitely has some pros and some cons. One of the things that I love about this brand is its packaging. I love how they're kind of shorter, a little bit smaller, the caps are really easy to use, and it's very easy to apply to the paper. The first color I'm testing is Lake Blue. So I went ahead and put a drop of that color onto my Yupo paper, surrounded by my 91% isopropyl alcohol. So I'm moving the color around with the alcohol to see how easily this color is incorporating into the alcohol so that I can get an idea of how smooth of a fade that this brand is able to create. I also like to put a little bit of extra color into the darkest part of that fade so that I can see how that ink is going to dry when it hasn't been incorporated quite as much into that alcohol. 
The second color I'm going to test out is Ocean Green, and this is a really beautiful color. I really think that Brie Reese has some beautifully pigmented inks. Uh, they have some lovely colors that are really bright, and they're really beautiful. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put a drop of the ink onto the U-Bowl paper, surround it with the 91% isopropyl alcohol, move that around, and then again apply a little bit more of that color into the center of the fade, and then wait a little bit to see how these dry. So something that I started to notice, even with the blue color above it, is I started to see a little bit of a texture developing as this was air drying. So let's speed it up and we can kind of see how that transforms. You can see really well, especially in the top blue color, that the ink started to form uh, some strange lines, a bit of a weird texture. This is because the alcohol was drying faster than the pigment. And that's something that can create some funky textures, especially in some of the darker colors. And this is the reason that I chose to place this brand at number seven. I really don't like it when I'm doing my fades and I have some unexpected textures that really take away from the color change that I was going for. At number six, we have the Blick Studio inks. This brand was meant to be a more cost-effective replacement for the Copic Various ink refills. One of the positives of this brand is, of course, that it's a little bit less expensive and you have quite a few colors to choose from similar to the Copic inks. You can even see that the branding is pretty similar. But one negative about the brand is I actually couldn't find a label for the color on the actual bottle. So I had these two inks and I'll say the colors real quick. Uh, the first one is ink blue and the second is steel blue. And I took both the caps off and when I put them back on, I didn't know which one went to which. So that's something to keep in mind maybe you want to label the bottles if you use this so let's see how they blend something that I noticed was there's a little bit of texture starting to form here and like we talked about earlier that's something that I view as a negative that I don't particularly like another thing that I started to notice is that that cool gray underneath it stayed pretty sticky there for a while so that's also something that is a bit of a tell that that ink wasn't able to blend super well with the alcohol. So there's some definite positives and negatives to this brand, but overall it's a really great starter ink. At number five, we have the T-Rex inks. This is another new brand to hit the market that I have a lot of good things to say about. Uh, the first color I'm gonna test is the Deep Sea Blue, and the second color is the Shiraz Red. So I went ahead and tested these two colors on my UPO paper, again, with the 91% isopropyl alcohol. And one of the first things I noticed is that the ink made a bit of a stringy pattern as I was trying to create a fade. You can see it there. Uh, so that just is a bit of a tell that it's having a hard time incorporating with the alcohol again. But I was able to easily overcome this just by encouraging that alcohol into the ink. Once I did that, it was a really beautiful fade with some really nice, vibrant colors. I was also really happy with uh, the consistency of the color. I didn't notice a lot of uh, separation or anything like that. There was just a little bit of purple in that blue and just the slightest bit of yellow in the pink, but nothing that was too aggressive. So just to make sure that the heat didn't affect that, I did two swatches that I let air dry and those both turned out really nicely as well. Overall, I think this is a great brand of ink. At number four, we have Ranger Inks. This is a really great brand. One of my favorite things about them is how many colors they have. The four colors that I decided to test though are Amethyst, Denim, Sailboat Blue, and Cranberry. I chose these colors because I think that they do a really nice job showing something about Ranger that I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, I do want to say though most of their colors have really nice blend, really beautiful vibrancy, and not a lot of color separation. But something that is really important to keep in mind with this brand is that some of them do separate a lot. So I'm going to hold this up to the camera here and you can start to see some of that. You can see there's a pink line there. Uh, there's some blue by the amethyst, there's some pink by the denim, and a little bit of yellow by that cranberry. So that is one of the big negatives about this brand, but it is an excellent choice if you're choosing to do something with a lot of pigmentation because those colors are so bright, they're really beautiful, and most of them stay very true to color. So that's the reason that I have this ink listed at number four. At number three, we have Jacquard Pinata inks. This was the first brand of ink that I had tried, and I really like this brand. 
They have some really nice colors and they also make some fantastic metallics. So I went ahead and tested Rainforest Green and Chili Pepper Red and I really like how these inks fade. They incorporate really nicely into the alcohol. They have barely any color separation, very little if any texture in that fade, and they're just really nice and easy to work with. The only slight negative I would say about these inks is that make sure to label your cap. All the caps look the same and they're all white, and if you mix them, you are going to notice a lot of color transfer to that bottle. So overall, this is a really nice brand that I highly recommend. At number two, we have Marabou inks. This was another new brand for me, and right away I'm going to start talking about the only really negative that I have to say about this, and that is the caps. You can tell that I'm really struggling here <laughs> with this cap. So the way that they work is you take off the white part on top and you poke the top of it with a pin, which I had a fine time with, but then when I tried to take the cap off again, in an effort to try and take it off, I just spilled it all over myself and really struggled. So that's, <laughs> that's a negative there, but it's really the only negative thing I have to say about these inks. So this color that I tested is Genetian, and I really liked it. I thought that the vibrancy was really beautiful. It faded really nicely. There was almost no, honestly, no texture as it was drying, and it incorporated into that alcohol just really beautifully. So I was very pleasantly surprised with this brand and really happy to place it at number two on my list. My number one alcohol ink brand is Copic. I absolutely love these inks. This is what I use in every piece I create. Uh, here I tested Current and Blue Green, but honestly, with 99% of the Copic colors, you're going to experience beautiful vibrancy, wonderful fading, barely any color change, and literally no texture. So overall, I think that these inks are just fantastic. They're a little bit pricey, but you really get what you pay for, and these inks last a long time. Only with a couple of the Copic colors will you experience just a little bit of a color line, but this can be easily removed. So there's my top eight inks, ending with my number one, Copic Various Inks.